Hello, Grumpy here. Wow, there's a lot of news this week in the EV world. So stay tuned for a quick fire roundup. So the Tesla Cybertruck was reported as being cancelled in Australia. But that was fake news. The headline was probably clickbait. But Tesla's standard connectivity is being cancelled after eight years of owning your Tesla. But that's for all orders placed after July the 20th, 2022. You can still get the premium connectivity for about $10 a month. Um, and the standard connectivity will continue for the life of the vehicle for all orders before the 20th. Tesla supercharger locations are growing in number, almost 250 worldwide in the last quarter, according to the financial report. And now version four superchargers are in the offing. The new chargers are thinner and taller than version three and may be capable of charging faster than the version three, maybe up to 350 kilowatts instead of 250 kilowatts. The V4 charger also includes a longer cable and is similar to the mega charger for the semi truck. And also in the financial report, the Tesla Robo Taxi is now listed as being in development. Previously, there was just future products, but it's now listed. It will be a few years before it makes it out of that category, I expect. Um, because they've still got the Cybertruck, the Semi and the Roadster to start being built. Tesla is making progress on integrating Steam into the uh, Tesla screen. Um, and he's saying, Elon said, that there will be a demo next month. Now, this was first mentioned back in February this year, but it seems to be getting closer with the demo release coming. Tesla has had in-car gaming for a while, but Steam integration will offer a large range of games that people already play at home. Looking forward to that one. And Tesla boss, uh, the, uh, Robin Denholm in Australia, says that there's currently 26,500 Teslas in Australia, and they're expecting to double that number by the end of the year. And many M3s and uh, sorry, Model 3s and Model Ys are already en route. And people have got deliveries starting early August, which is looking good. Mine's at the end of August, unfortunately. A Tesla Shanghai YouTuber, Wu Wa, has shown a video recently of around 3,000 Teslas sitting at the port in Shanghai waiting to be loaded. Then yesterday, he posted another video showing that the port had largely been emptied. So those Teslas are now already on a board ship en route to somewhere. Who knows where? Australia? He also showed that the Shanghai factory uh, was being restored to its pre-renovation state and there was a gradual increase in the number of vehicles being made after the upgrades to the Model Y production lines. Charge, which is Ampol, the petrol stations, have now set up something called Amp Charge and they're putting chargers into their petrol stations. The first of these um, EV charging stations um, is being installed in Alexandria in Sydney. Now, Ampol got $7.05 million from ARENA, which is the Australian Renewable Energy um, Agency. And it's planning to use that money to roll out 120 sites in total by the end of 2023. Now, these chargers are fast DC chargers capable of charging up to 150 kilowatts with their CCS2 plugs, and they've got CHAdeMO plugs on them as well. Who knows why they're putting CHAdeMO on, because that's just about defunct now. In Perth, Western Australia, the first one is earmarked for the Ampol station in Belmont. The latest batch of Hyundai Ioniq 5s sold out in just a few short minutes. Apparently, 1,100 potential customers were in line at the opening of the sales. 
but unfortunately a technical glitch restricted sales here in Western Australia. Typical. Neo confirms it's got a 150 kilowatt hour solid state battery for delivery in quarter four this year. This battery could therefore give the Neo ES8 a range of 850 kilometers, their ES6 900 kilometers, and the ET7 more than a thousand kilometers. Now all those are NEDC. So take those figures with a pinch of salt, knock about a third off to get closer to real world range. The battery has got a solid electrolyte, a silicon carbon composite anode material and an ultra high nickel cathode and gives it an energy density of 360 watt hours per kilogram, which is right up there. And of course, what would this be without some BYD news? BYD are going into Japan, initially with the Yuan Plus or Atto 3 in January 2023. And they'll follow that up later on in the year with the Dolphin and then the Seal later on in 2023. They're also launching the Yuan Plus Atto 3 in Costa Rica. But in Costa Rica, it will be called the Yuan Plus, not the Atto 3. Who knows? And also the Atto 3 has obtained the Australian regulator approval. So it's now able to be sold legally in Australia. And that was granted on the 21st of July. And Stellantis is pulling out of its joint venture with GAC in China. And BYD and Leap Motor are reportedly in talks to take over the GAC Stellantis plant in Changsha. The first batch of 1000 MG4 EVs are leaving China for Europe. The European debut of the MG4 is pegged for the fourth quarter 2022. And so it should hit dealerships across Europe, but also New Zealand and Australia, Mexico and South America, as well as the Middle East at the end of the year. Baidu in China has unveiled something called the Apollo RT6. Now it's its sixth generation autonomous vehicle or robo taxi. They're aiming to put a fleet of these mass produced vehicles into trial operation in the second half of 2023 and eventually expanded across many, many cities in China over the coming few years. Cattle, which is the world's largest battery manufacturer at the moment, says it's developing a battery that they've labeled M3P. And it's different from their recently announced LMFP, which is lithium manganese iron phosphate. Details of the battery are a bit sketchy at the moment. The LMFP batteries have got a theoretical density of 230 watt hours per kilogram, which is still 15 to 20% higher than straight LFP batteries. But they also cost a little bit more. And BYD terminated development of LMFP batteries in 2016 because of their low, lower cycle life. Apparently they could still be looking into it now. Herbert Dees, who's VW CEO, is stepping down as of the 1st of September 2022. He played a key role in getting VW models electrified. But he and the board have always been at odds with each other. So the board confirmed that the decision was made by mutual agreement, which we all know what that means. Um, and his replacement is going to be the Porsche boss. But for Porsche and these, they've never got on. So um, he's leaving. Um, where to for Dees? Tesla, perhaps? He and Elon Musk have always got on well, so we will wait and see. I'm sure something will be announced sometime soon. And here in Australia, the New South Wales government is helping strata title buildings get EV ready. Now, strata buildings 
long had a problem when it comes to installing EV chargers. As most of them have said, no, you're not going to be allowed to put in EV chargers. So the New South Wales government is helping alter this attitude. They've provided a five-step program, typical bloody governments, um, to help the body corporates in their decision-making process. Sounds typical government to me. In my opinion, they just need to make it a law that body corporates have to install EV chargers if somebody asks them to, rather than provide a five-step process for them to look into it. And finally, I did mention in a recent video that charging stations need to be made in such a way that people with disabilities can get there and charge their EV. Um, even if they have like the, the Blue Bay disabled parking, they've got one of those with a charger on it. Well, Ford obviously listened to me and they're now trialing a robot charging station designed to give disabled drivers a helping hand. The driver pulls up to the unit and can activate it via an app. The robot arm will retract after the charging is completed. So this is now in trials and hopefully will make it into real life situations, or at least I hope it makes it into production because this is a really good idea. So that's it for quick fire news. Thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to click like and subscribe. It costs you nothing, but it really does help the channel. So thanks very much. See you all soon.